the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Friday, June 28, 2013. Now, it may come as a surprise to you, it certainly is a surprise to me, but Wesley Clark says that the American people like the NSA Stasi state, spying on them. And that's the headlines of a Kurt Nemo article on InfoWars.com. Now, he made these comments last night on the CNN program Aaron Burnett. And as Kurt Nemo points out, Clark is a notorious war criminal who used cluster bombs and depleted uranium on civilians during his reign as the Supreme Commander of NATO forces. And he said that the American people love the idea of government illegally, unconstitutionally spying on them. He told Burnett, the quote, American people are solidly behind the PRISM program and all that's going on. He also told another person on the program, uh, said, Brooks underscored the establishment's claim that Snowden is a spy guilty of espionage, despite the fact that he's not accused of working for a foreign government. He's a 30-year-old spy. He's been charged with espionage, said Brooks. Well, this is what's dangerous about the leaks from Snowden, and this is what a lot of people are concerned about what is being exposed and the controlled exposure of this. What we're finding out is just a little tip of the iceberg that's being verified with these leaks. For a long time, people have known, and it's been brought out by whistleblowers right after September 11th attack in 2001, that the government was collecting all kinds of data on everyone, not limited to foreign collection like the FISA law supposedly allowed them, although there's question as to whether or not that was legally, constitutionally done. That also involved, if they could prove a connection, that involved spying on American citizens. But after September 11th in 2001, they just threw out any restrictions of the Constitution on spying on Americans. Now, the concern is that with these limited exposures, saying that they're just collecting metadata, they're just looking at some relationships on these databases as part of the PRISM program, that this is a way of gradually exposing the American public and getting them to be accustomed to and accept this kind of espionage. That's why it's very important for people to speak out. It's also very important to draw the distinction between espionage and whistleblowing. What Snowden did in no way exposed any classified information that helped an enemy. What he did was he pointed out criminal, illegal, unconstitutional behavior of our government. And for that he's being called a spy. Now talk about having your home bugged. Check out this. This is an article from U.S. News Reports, and they're actually working on ways to control cockroaches uh, by remote control using game controllers. Now, this is being told, you can see a picture right there of a, a cockroach with a little IC uh, wired onto his back right there. Um, I guess it's a different way of bugging your house, uh, literally bugging your house. Now, they claim that they're going to use this to help look for victims during disasters, but... Uh, I don't think that's the main thrust of our government, trying to locate people in disasters. I think the main thrust of our government is spying on us, looking at everything that we're doing. And uh, just be aware that even the, the literal bugs in your house may really be bugs for the government. Now, we also have some human cockroaches, some bugs on two legs. And a story in Wired Magazine uh, points out that a WikiLeaks volunteer was actually a paid informant for the FBI. From the article, they say, on an August workday in 2011, a Cherubic 18-year-old Icelandic man, this 18-year-old Icelandic man named Sigurdur Sigi Thordarson, walked through the stately doors of the U.S. Embassy in Reykjavik, his jacket pocket concealing his calling card, which was a crumpled photocopy of an Australian passport. He took a photocopy of Julian Assange's passport. He was a longtime volunteer for WikiLeaks with direct access to Assange and a key position as an organizer in the group. And he turned in Assange and WikiLeaks, he betrayed them to the FBI for a total of about $5,000, a little bit more than 30 pieces of silver for this Judas. The FBI flew him internationally four times for debriefings, including one trip to Washington, D.C., and on the last meeting obtained through Thorderson eight hard drives packed with chat logs, video, and other data from WikiLeaks. Now, Stephen Aftergood of the Federation of American Scientists Project says it's a sign that the FBI views WikiLeaks as a suspected criminal organization rather than a news organization. WikiLeaks was something new, so I think the FBI had to make a choice at some point as to how to evaluate it. Is this the New York Times or is this something else? They clearly decided it was something else. Well, 
the government doesn't offer any deference to official news organizations. How much more official and more mainstream do you need to be than to be the, Amer the Associated Press? And yet the government was spying on them. The government was treating them as if they were criminals. The government treats everyone as criminals, as guilty, before you even have a chance. There's no indictment. They don't have a reasonable cause to bug your conversations or to intercept your data. They just do it. And that is clearly unconstitutional. They're exposing these criminal acts is what these people are actually doing, what WikiLeaks is actually doing. And when you do that, the criminals are going to come after you. Uh, we've, that brings us really to our daily quote today from David Brinkley. And he says that a successful man is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks that others throw at him. Well, the FBI and other government agencies don't just spy on people. If you remember the interview we had last week with Dr. William Pepper, he talked about how the FBI and other government agencies were involved in the assassination of Martin Luther King. And we see in an InfoWars report, we have an FBI document that plots to kill occupied leaders if, quote, deemed necessary. Now, this was something that came off of an FBI website, and from the document it says, an identified blank, as of October, planned to engage and sniper attacks against protesters in Houston, Texas, if deemed necessary. An identified blank had received intelligence that indicated that protesters in New York and Seattle planned similar protests in Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, and Austin, Texas. Blank planned to gather intelligence against the leaders of the protest groups and obtain photographs, then formulate a plan to kill the leadership via suppressed sniper rifles. Pay attention to that last bit again. This is from the leaked document, well, actually the declassified document from the FBI. It's a redacted document. Someone was going to formulate a plan to kill the leadership via a suppressed, that's a silenced, sniper rifle. And if you remember when we were talking about uh, Adam Kokesh's planned 4th of July march, that the D.C. police chief, police chief Lanier, said that uh, they could tolerate disobedience from protesters. Well, that's not disobedience if you're protesting. It's not a criminal action. That is constitutionally protected speech. That's expressly mentioned in the First Amendment. She went on to say that when he did actually involve, if he would have actually involved in civil disobedience, that that would be violating the law. Well, yes, that's what civil disobedience is. But it is not disobedience to protest. And that's what these Occupy protesters were doing. And because of that, because of just constitutionally exercised free speech, the FBI drew up contingency plans to kill, by a silenced sniper rifle, the leaders of Occupy. That is very amazing. Shouldn't be. We've seen that sort of thing before, but uh, hopefully this will get wide coverage. Now, the government kills us, spies on us, but it doesn't just stop there. There's also a constant harassment of our citizens. At 2 a.m. Thursday morning, the New York City Council made a decision that's going to affect the stop and frisk program. The cops know who the wise guys are, they know who the dealers are, they know who Supporters the of the Oversight are. Committee see the move as a way to keep an eye on a police department that has been targeting specific groups. But how will this measure be enforced? Intro 1079 creates an independent inspector general to monitor the police department, and Intro 1080, according to the Atlantic Wire, would allow individuals to sue the police department in state court not only for individual instances of bias, but also for policies that disproportionately affect people in any protected categories. Mayor Bloomberg told churchgoers in Brownsville, Brooklyn, that the program keeps guns off the streets and keeps New Yorkers safe. Through these stops, the police have recovered thousands of guns over the past decade and tens of thousands of other Mayor weapons. Mayor Bloomberg said no it would leave the NYPD pointlessly hammered by outside intrusion and recklessly threatened by second-guessing from the courts. In the past, Bloomberg said that it should be amended and not ended. What does this really mean? Somehow, I have a feeling that it'll go somewhere along the lines with limiting hot dogs and making sure that you can't have a large Slurpee. Thank you, Mr. Bloomberg. Check out PrisonPlanet.tv. You can give your username and password to up to 10 people. I'm G. Giornetta with an InfoWars Nightly News Alert. 
Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden, for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden, that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers, with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.